It's no secret that Christmas parties and New Year's parties promote inebriation with the celebration, or at very least, a toast. Inebriation is part of the most traditional celebrations, and it may not surprise you to learn that the combination of inebriation and celebration dates back to our tribal ancestors. What may surprise you, however, is the fact that modern-day religion also has direct ties to ritualistic inebriation. These rituals and celebrations throughout antiquity were often annual events, and these annual events were marked by particular celestial alignments. We'd like to discuss Santa Claus again for a moment. This mysterious old man somehow got himself intertwined into the Christian celebrations of the birth of their deity. In the Middle Ages, Santa was a shaman, and you can easily trace many similarities between the shamans of the past into our Christmas traditions of today. A shaman is, in many ways, similar to what we more commonly refer to in America as a medicine man. In Siberia, the local shaman was the oracle of the community. Nothing of importance happened in the community without the okay from the shaman. The shaman would also hold very strong plant knowledge. This knowledge included plants for medicine and healing, poisons and warfare, and powerful hallucinogenic plants used in their religious ceremonies. You can often find chimney sweeps on old holiday postcards holding the Amanita muscaria mushroom. This is but a subtle hint to the connection of someone with the Amanita mushroom and a chimney. The ancient shamans of Siberia would go to the houses, huts, or yurts of the people in the community in celebration of the winter solstice and bring them these pre-dried mushrooms and often guide them through the experience. It was their yearly tradition. If the main door to the yurt was snowed over, which they often were during the winter time, it is said that the shaman would enter symbolically through the secondary entrance. This just so happens to be the smoke hole in the roof or the chimney. The shaman, dressing in red and white and carrying a huge bag full of Amanita muscaria mushrooms that he had picked and dried during the previous season, enough for an entire community, would go door to door bartering and selling his dried mushrooms. And how would the shaman travel? He used a sleigh, and the animals pulling the sleigh were not dogs or horses. The Siberian shaman used caribou, also known as reindeer, as they were indigenous to Siberia. Amanita muscaria mushrooms go through a chemical process called decarboxylation as they dry. We'll talk more about this chemical process in a minute, but they also go through a physical process when they dry. They get lighter. They retain much of their potency when they are dried, and in fact, chemically speaking, they get stronger. And this allows the shaman to consume more than if the mushrooms were wet and heavy. Even to this day, it is a common practice for people to stack their mushrooms in socks and hang them over the fireplace overnight to dry them out. But imagine that you're in a pine forest hunting mushrooms for your entire community. These mushrooms can grow to be quite large, and the sack that you used to carry the mushrooms in would get quite heavy. But knowing that these mushrooms should be dried before ceremonial ingestion, it would be wise to dry them out before carrying them home. This would allow you to carry more, and it would keep the mushrooms on the bottom of the sack from being crushed by the weight of the others. One good way to dry the mushrooms, as you continue to hunt for more, is to select a tree in a central location and use its bows as a basket to hold your freshly picked mushrooms, drying them in the sun as you search for more. This would look a lot like a decorated Christmas tree. And as we mentioned, the red and white mushroom Christmas ornaments are some of the oldest ornaments you can find.
The oldest of all Christmas tree decorations were edible. When the church adopted the Christmas tree, making it okay for Christians to have one and often placing one in the church as well, the ornaments on the tree were the Eucharist, the body of Christ. And the mushrooms are, as John Allegro pointed out, literally the flesh of God. And symbolically placing the Eucharist on the Christmas tree is a direct representation of placing the mushrooms on the Christmas tree. And these stories were created to pass this type of knowledge down. Easter is a great example of this. The Easter egg hunt is a mushroom hunt. You find the correct mushroom. It's a way of identifying the mushroom. Find us the correct mushroom and we'll get you a treat. And who better to go hunting these mushrooms, these colorful little egg-like mushrooms, or the big holy grail type mushrooms, who better to go find these mushrooms than little kids who can crawl up underneath these trees? rather than some big clumsy adult. These mushrooms have a symbiotic relationship with these trees. Conifer trees. They love conifer trees. Pine trees. They flourish under pine trees. And this mushroom is the hidden mushroom. Hidden eggs. You can see here this big bright red mushroom is obvious on the screen, but just below it is one that's hidden. So you have to have a good eye Depending on the season and depending on the area, these mushrooms can be gold as well. So they are the golden egg. We see these mushrooms reflected in our Easter cards as well. A kind Easter wishes as the gnome is leaning upon the mushroom with his sacred text or his recipe book open. So we pass this knowledge down to our children. We initiate the children. So like Santa Claus who dresses in red and white, the shaman will dress in the colors of their sacred plants and the Amanita using shaman will dress in the red and white colors of the Amanita muscaria. And here we see the Pope dressing in something that looks quite a bit like the Amanita mushroom and the snow adds a little extra effect putting the white dots on the red cap. The Popes and Cardinals all throughout history have dressed just like this Amanita muscaria mushroom.